Thou shalt commit academic adultery often and joyfully. That is my first of the Ten Commandments for a happy PhD and research. Now, importantly, this means is go and sort of like explore ideas. Don't feel trapped or like you're married to a particular idea or even your field. Some of the best times I ever had throughout my academic career was speaking to people, even in my own department, that I had no idea what their research was about. It helped feed that creative mind. You know, I need lots of information to go into my mind so I can start looking for overlap with my research. And the only way to do that is to go out and start exploring different ideas with different people. If you're lucky enough to go to a conference or symposia, also sort of like look at different streams at that conference that you would never otherwise go to. Just use your own interest. Uh, compass to kind of just sit in on things that aren't directly related or even related to your research at all and look for new techniques, new styles of research, of data analysis that you could potentially use in your own research. Getting as much input as possible outside of what your supervisor can provide can really help, first of all, keep you more interested in your research, but also start to find the ideas that will add that secret element to your research that no one else is doing. So, go and explore. Go and be academically uh, polyamorous as much as you can. Thou shall murder bad ideas quickly. The thing about research is that we are always strapped for time. So if you can get to a point where you are confident a certain idea or a certain line of inquiry doesn't work, it's time to kill it quickly. Now, a lot of people try to double down on the things that don't work. And I've talked about this a lot throughout my, my videos and on this channel. But importantly, if you find something is not working through your PhD or research career and you are on a limited uh, sort of time scale, just kill it quickly and move on. Double down on the things that are working and uh, sort of like set yourself a little uh, sort of reminder in your calendar that every sort of month or every couple of months, you'll sit back and you'll actually have a look at the things that are working well. Go through your lab book, go through your notes, speak to your supervisor and just say, look, these are the things that are working. These are the things that are not working and really focus on those things that are working. Double down on the things that are working and make sure that then you look at other lines of inquiries away from the things that are working. This will help you progress quickly, but also ensure that you don't end up with a PhD or a research project that is just failure after failure after failure. The time to sort of fail is early on. The first year, do as much as you can in as many areas as you can and expect to fail. But as soon as you're past that kind of first hump, it's time to double down on the things that are working. Go check out my other video where I talk about like the, those steps and how to get through a PhD and a research project project, you know, with all of your uh, sanity intact. Honour thy supervisor. And what I mean this is like, don't kiss their bum unnecessarily, but it's important that you take their ideas and then you pass them through your own filter. Honor the things that they need to say to you, write them down in your book, and then you can use your own critical thinking skills to work out whether or not it is something that you want to do in your research. Because remember, this is your research project. And so importantly, honor what they have to say, listen to them, respect them, grow that relationship in a really positive way. Because if that relationship turns sour, it is very hard, first of all, to spin it around back into a positive relationship. But secondly, it can really delay the research for unnecessary reasons. Sometimes we may not agree with our supervisor, sometimes we may not like our supervisor, but ultimately you should always honor their opinions and they've been around the block a few times, most of them, so they know mostly what they're talking about. Especially in the early stages of research project, I often allow a lot of information to come my way from them and guidance is sort of like much more important in those early stages. And then as you get through your research project or your PhD, it's time to start exploring different things on your own way uh, in your own way with their guidance so honor them grow that professional relationship well and you'll be in for a much nicer PhD or research project thou shalt not take the name of the university in vain as a PhD student as a researcher it is probably best 
not to annoy your university. And what I mean about that is universities are very, very protective about their personal brand, about what people are saying about them. So it's important that you kind of fit in with the system. If you have issues, speak to the appropriate people. Don't do what I did, which uh, was kind of make a public display of how unhappy I was with a certain university. It never works out well. The only people that really get away with poking the beast of the university are the professors that have made it all the way to the top of the kind of academic ladder. And at this point, they're so valuable to the university that they can essentially get away with murder. Um, and importantly, you are not there yet. So don't try to fight the system. It is not there to be fought at the moment. Wait until you're a mega superstar professor and then you can start sort of pulling some levers within the university. Until then, it really is about fitting in. You know, it's not about being taken advantage of. You can still speak about the things you don't like. You can make sure that you speak to your supervisor about things you don't like. But importantly, it's about making sure that the academic system works with you or you work with the academic system to get your qualifications. So uh, yeah, don't start sort of like producing a blog like I did, which talks so badly about the university because it's not going to end well. Keep the Sabbath day holy. What I mean by this is that you should ensure that at least once a week there is a day where you do not think about research as much as you can do, but that you do something that gives you energy, em uh, empowers you some way. For me, that was always speaking to friends, playing uh, percussion or samba in a Brazilian group. Um, that was sort of uh, going out in nature, spending time with my friends and family. Uh, it's important that you do activities that energize you that aren't related to your research. And it can sometimes feel strange because I know that some cultures in different research groups mean that they kind of force you to be there seven days a week, six days a week on the weekends. If you can, make sure that you speak to your supervisor and say, you know, it's very important for me to have at least one day where I can go and do something um, that uh, will make sure that when I'm in the lab, I'm more efficient, I'm more focused and I'm happier um, to be here. So yeah, it's it can be tough if you've got a really hardcore supervisor who really doesn't you know like their students doing anything but their work but it's so important so remember to set aside a day that is for you and you do activities that energize you if you're not extroverted like me even just a, an activity like sitting in reading a book watching a movie something that energizes you that's the important bit thou shalt be willing to admit when thou art wrong that's important because you are gonna be wrong a lot. And also people are gonna tell you when you're wrong. Go check out my other video where I talk about how to handle criticism because that is kind of a huge part of being a PhD student. And even when you sort of graduate and you're an, you're an academic um, sort of like a professor or even as a postdoc, you will get criticism after criticism. And it is so refreshing to meet someone and to work with someone who goes, hmm, yeah, you know, I may be wrong. Let's talk about it. Rather than having sort of this barrier go up and then having to fight with them about something. So make sure that you are able to at least take on board criticism rather than fighting criticism. I've been in so many student meetings where people immediately go on the defense saying, well, I think this is the best, this is the thing, you know, like, this isn't the time to be talking about that. This is an ideas session. It's not about you being personally attacked. We are just trying to make the ideas better. That is what research is all about. And so admitting when you're wrong and taking on advice is a very, very crucial part of a successful research project. And uh, it doesn't feel good when you say you're wrong. It's not something that I think comes naturally to a lot of people and a lot of researchers, but at least acknowledging that there could be issues with your thought process, your experiments, your, um, your, your writing, your hypotheses, your conclusions, all of it. Take on board the criticism and admit that sometimes you're wrong. And maybe for me, maybe most of the time I was wrong about certain areas of my work, but that's how we grow as people. So don't get defensive, become coachable, that's the word. Make sure that you're coachable and that if someone comes to you with criticism, you can take it on board gracefully. You don't have to agree with what they say, but you need to at least be able to listen. 
Thou shalt strive to make thy research open and accessible for others. Now, the thing about this is that we aren't necessarily rewarded as researchers for talking about our research to the general public. Maybe that's changing with different metrics like alt metrics, and maybe the university is even getting on board with wanting their researchers to spread the good message for them. But it is a very important part of growing your brand. Going back to being a, uh, an adulterer in the academic sense of going and speaking to people, even within an academic field, it's important to spread your message. If you're not going out and speaking to people regularly in a format that they feel comfortable with, and what I mean about that is you know your audience. If you're speaking to academics, you do an academic talk. If you're speaking to the general public, you do something much more casual, you know, not focused on data and PowerPoint and that sort of stuff. Making sure that you build up these skills to talk to a range of different audiences is very important. Put your hand up for three minute theses. Put your hand up for talking in libraries. I know that a number of my collaborators have talked in libraries about their research too. Um, I think it's like a retiree group. All of those experiences are really valuable, but don't just do the same old academic presentation for each one. You need to know your audience and adjust it appropriately. And those skills are incredibly valuable even outside of academia. Thou shall not steal. Without proper citation, nothing will torpedo your career quicker than not citing a reference. People are very, very, and probably rightly, sensitive about this sort of thing in academia. So make sure that if you are talking directly about someone else's work, you give them appropriate citations and references. Also, I think people are particularly sort of sensitive about this is because the H index, the number of papers you have with that amount of citations, is very important for career progression. So if people are not giving you the citations you deserve, it can actually impact someone's career. I think that's probably why people are so sensitive about it, at least in the sciences. Let me know if it's the same for your uh, field. But citations are very important. If it is found out that you are stealing people's work, people's data, people's ideas, without proper citation, you will be going down. Thou shalt be mindful of the limitations of thy research. It is important that you don't overstate what your data actually says. As a researcher, I actually was so careful about this um, just because I know that my general reaction, my ability to communicate things in an exciting way means that I may put a bit of a hyperbole spin on things and that's not what research is about. You have to make sure that you do talk about your research in a sensible manner. You understand the limitations of what your research data says and what it doesn't say. Perfect for discussion papers, perfect for your thesis. Making sure you understand the limits of what you can say and then discuss the limitations of that work is gonna make you a much better researcher. So just don't go with your first gut instinct on the importance or the, uh, the reach of your work, but rather sit back a moment and just say, well, what does this really mean? And try to sort of like find the definite limits of your research. If in doubt, speak to someone else. Academics love uh, a robust discussion about other people's work. Thou shall not cover other people's careers or papers. This is important, especially if you're an early career researcher. Don't try to compare your current position to someone else because you'll end up just making yourself very sad. I used to spend ages on Google Scholar looking at other people's H index, and maybe this is sad to admit, but I would spend ages looking at their H index and just being like, why isn't my H index like this? Why am I so behind? And the thing is, is that that was doing me no good. What I should have been doing instead of spending hours is working on the next paper that I'm writing. I should always be trying to be better than the person or the academic I was a year ago, six months ago, even a month ago. That's how you see genuine progress. Other people's careers are gonna go in sort of like different phases and they may be going through an awesome publishing phase and then it will die off. I've seen it loads of times. So you are maybe just not in your publishing phase at the moment and that's absolutely okay. Stop looking at other people's careers and saying this is where I should be at the moment. 
moment. So just allow yourself to ride the waves, um, be as stoic as possible, and uh, accept the things that you can control and the things you can't. You can't control other people's publishing careers unless you uh, hijack their labs and sort of um, uh, burn their lab books. But what you can do is make sure that you're working every little day, bit by bit, towards your goal of finishing a thesis, of publishing a paper, whatever it is. That's what's in your control. So stop looking at Google Scholar, Andy. It's not gonna help you. So there we have it. There are the 10 commandments of a successful research career or a PhD. Let me know in the comments what you would add. And also remember there are more ways you can get in contact with me. The first thing is to sign up to my free newsletter where you'll get five emails over about two weeks. And it includes everything from the tools I use, the podcasts I've been on, how to write the perfect abstract and more. It's exclusive content available for free, no spam. So you'll just be able to get that right into your email inbox. Brilliant. And another thing you should do is go check out academiainsider.com. It's my project where I've got my two eBooks, the Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, as well as the PhD Survival Guide. There's gonna be extra things released this year as well, so go check it out. And also we've got the Insider Forum and a blog that's growing out quickly as well. Oh my God, now you're busy, go do all those things and then get back to your research because that's what really matters. All right then, I'll see you in the next video.